Today in the news, we got a weird Intel CPU, a poor attempt at showing off, and some Xbox. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel and Nvidia in a way. So a few months ago, a Reddit user posted on the GeForce Now Reddit with the specs of the server system. For the GPU, it obviously was a Turing-based Tesla card called the Tesla T10, but the CPU is what I wanna talk about today. It was an Intel CC150. There was no branding, no generation name, no core, no Xeon, no lakes, nothing. All we had at this point was the clock speed, which was 3.5 gigahertz. Well, this CPU just made a reappearance on a Chinese forum, with a user from Zizu putting it through its paces. According to the post, this CPU is an 8-core 16-thread CPU based on Coffee Lake, so it should be equivalent to an 8th or a 9th gen CPU. The curious thing is that it has zero turbo boost functionality. In terms of performance, without turbo boost, it struggles a bit. It gets beat in single core against the 9700K, which is 8-core and 8 threads, but it does keep up in multi-core thanks to the extra threads. So why am I even talking about this CPU? Well, you can buy it on Taobao for about 2,160 Wong, which is about $300 US or 411 Canadian. Still, why would you want to buy it? Well, for its performance against the 9700K, it might be worth the money. It's close to $100 less and only gets beaten in single core. Plus, it seems compatible with the Z390 chipset because this is the platform it was tested on. The only issue is, we don't know if it's unlocked. If it is, then the prospects shoot way up. You could get close to 9900K performance with it. But as I struggled to read the Chinese translations, let's assume it's not, at which point it's not really worth it for gaming stations because of the low clocks, but it's super low TDP might make it an amazing choice for super small form factor builds. That's if you really wanna pay money for a CPU you know nothing about. I'd recommend just going for an AMD. Moving on to some smartphone news, we got Qualcomm showing off something that they shouldn't have. So in December, the company unveiled the brand new Snapdragon 865 processors. And while the specs look like an improvement, I didn't really know how that would translate in things like video capture, gaming, or just overall fluidity of the phone. Well, the company decided to show off a professional 8K video captured by this new Snapdragon 865. And sure, I don't have an 8K display, but even in 4K, this looks awful. There were artifacts everywhere, the low light quality is awful, and the frame rate seemed crazy unstable. I mean, look at that. And also this. It's jiggling. This makes no sense. Who decided to pull out a video like that? Now, some of these issues might be due to poor editing or export issues, but come on, this can't be all YouTube compression. One of the first 8K videos on YouTube from Newman's Film didn't even have this bad of an image quality. Anyways, go watch it. I'll link it down below and let me know what you think. In console news, it looks like the Xbox Series X's weird port at the back is not a debugging port. Brad Sams from Throwout.com, one of the first outlets who spread the photos of the new console, said that this would be a debugging port, but he is now correcting himself, saying that it is, in fact, a CF Express slot. The information comes from both the data sheet of the memory controller used in the Xbox Series X and developers allegedly receiving CF Express cards for their systems. The CF Express standard allows for speeds up to 4 gigabytes per second, which is really fast, but current cards range at around 1600 megabytes, and those cards are about $600 for half a terabyte. Yikes. Now, if Xbox does this, I feel like it's gonna go horribly wrong, like HD DVD wrong. Even if Xbox sells millions of Xboxes in the holidays this season, it won't be enough to reduce the price of these things right away. Plus, other markets like photography are using this format and those companies will not be happy about the price drops. Hopefully, you can just plop an NVMe USB 3 drive on the Xbox Series X or at least open it to replace the current NVMe. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, you know where to put them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. By the way, when I pointed down there, I meant the comment section, okay? Stop filthing up my comment section.